Chapter 11, Moses continues with his final message unto this new generation before they cross into the promised land. Moses goes on in this chapter 11 to retell of the miracles God wrought on behalf of his people in Egypt and at the Red Sea. A few verses later in this chapter, he reminds them about how the earth opened up and swallowed alive Dathan, Abiram, and others. And after those two, we would read in verse 6 about <clears throat> the mercies of God in general. Verses 7 through 9, a comparative description of Egypt and Canaan, to which we would pick up in this 10 through 12, where it reads, For the land, whither thou goest, and to possess it is not as the land of Egypt. From whence ye came out, where thou sowest thy seed, and waterest it with thy foot, as a garden of herbs, meaning that they had to labor very much for their crops in Egypt. But the land, whither ye go to possess it, in Canaan is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. As you'll see right here, an aerial view of the two. You have Egypt over here, where there's only green around, there's only growth around the Nile. But then if you look over here in the land of Canaan, which would become Israel, it's all green, basically. Every bit of it has some kind of green near every spot. Adam Clark commented, Rain scarcely ever falls in Egypt, and God supplies the lack of it by the inundations of the Nile. That's why people build and settle around the Nile. But in Judea, it is different, as there they have their proper seasons of rain. And while we have this map, I'll just point these out. This is the area that Jesus resided for the majority of his ministry. Here you see the Sea of Galilee. Capernaum would have been located around it. And uh, Nazareth would have been located over here. Bethlehem and Jerusalem would have been located southward from all of that. But for the most part, the Gospels took place up in this area. And the next few verses go over the dissuasives from idolatry. And then we come to verse 16, where it reads, Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, unless ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth thee. So right here, we're reading about how they're warned before they go into the promised land even, they're warned about what will happen if they fall into idolatry and how a drought and famine would come upon this beautiful land if they fell into idolatry. This would actually occur during the times of the prophets Elijah and Jeremiah, Elijah of the northern kingdom of Israel and Jeremiah of the southern kingdom of Judah. Both times were their nations steeped in idolatry. So just know, my friends, like the world today, these warnings from God, he is very serious about them. So such punishments coming to pass upon a nation or the whole world, as it will here very soon, it should be expected. It has been foretold what will happen, and uh, the world has almost just reached its peak of iniquity. Moving on with the next verse, 17, the words of God are to be laid up in the hearts to be for a sign on their hands, foreheads, gates, etc. Taught to their children, made the subject of frequent conversation to the end that their days may be multiplied. And if obedient, God shall give them possession of the land and not one of their enemies shall be able to withstand them. We then come to verse 22, which reads, for if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. So they're given warnings if they disobey, and they're giving promises of great victory if they obey, even that they would possess greater nations and mightier than themselves. And this actually occurred, my friends, at the, at the times of David. Uh, just look at how much more was uh, expanded upon the land whenever King David, in whom loved the Lord, and whom the people, there was this huge revival whenever David became king. And throughout his reign, they were king, and they had so much victory. But then, shortly after, his son Solomon took the reign. And his son Solomon, the kingdom remained for much of it 
to be that expanded mainly because the Lord loved David so much. But Solomon, he fell into idolatry and it quickly became reduced down to this very, very small size. And not even that, but it was split in two. There wasn't even unity among the Israelites after that. Judah was uh, left alone to the south in Israel. Actually, the ten tribes, they went north and occupied that land, which would later become the Samaritans of the place. And the remainder of the chapter speaks of life and death. A blessing and a curse are set before them. The blessings to be put on Mount Gerizim and the curses on Mount Ebal. The promise that they should pass over Jordan and observe these statutes and the promised land. Chapter 11 Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments alway. And know ye this day, for I speak not with your children which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm, and his miracles and his acts which he did in the midst of Egypt, unto Pharaoh the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. And what he did unto the army of Egypt, unto their horses, and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord hath destroyed them unto this day. And what he did unto you in the wilderness, until ye came into this place. And what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their households, and their tents, and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, and go in and possess the land, whither ye go to possess it, and that ye may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord sware unto your fathers, to give unto them and to their seed, a land that floweth with milk and honey. For the land whither thou goest in to possess it, is not as the land of Egypt, from when she came out, where thou sowedst thy seed, and wateredst it with thy foot, as a garden of herbs. But the land, whither ye go to possess it, is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it, from the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, in the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you, to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours, from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you, 
For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day, to go after other gods which ye have not known. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord thy God hath brought thee in unto the land whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim, and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side of Jordan, by the way where the sun goeth down, in the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the Champagne over against Gilgal, beside the plains of Mori? For ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you, and ye shall possess it, and dwell therein. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day.